The arms race of the early 60s meant big budgets for the development of new military weapons, and it meant larger, faster, and more accurate defense systems. Some new weapons seemed like science fiction. While we hoped they would discourage the Soviets from any thoughts of conquest, they also led us closer to the nightmare of nuclear war. The new Polaris missiles, launched from submarines and carrying nuclear warheads, could reach Moscow in minutes. There were other developments in space technology, like Telstar, the first communication satellite launched in 1962. The satellite must be high enough to uh, carry messages uh, from both sides of the world, which is, of course, a very essential requirement for peace, and I think this understanding which will inevitably come from the speedier communications is bound to uh, increase uh, the well-being and uh, security of all people here and those across the oceans. May 5th, 1961, three weeks after Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin first orbited the Earth, astronaut Alan Shepard was shot into space from Cape Canaveral atop a Redstone rocket. More than 100 million Americans watched the 15-minute suborbital flight on television. And later, we would see the splashdown and recovery of the capsule by helicopter. We were elated. At last, a space tribute we could celebrate. Alan Shepard got a hero's welcome. In July, NASA announced that astronaut John Glenn would be the first American to orbit the Earth. Even before the flight, he was being called a second Lindbergh. And if successful, the flight would make Glenn a space-age superstar. NASA prepared Glenn for the mission while journalists explored his background, his family, his boyhood home in Ohio, the Buck Rogers books he had read as a kid. The press was getting ready. Then, after many postponements, came the liftoff. It was February 20th, 1962. Once the capsule separated from the rocket, Glenn was in orbit. He took pictures, ate food from a tube, and wondered at the new view of the Earth and space. The stars just seemed to jump out at you, he said. After more than four hours in space, the capsule re-entered the atmosphere. Within 20 minutes of splashdown, Glenn's capsule was being lifted aboard the destroyer Noah. When Glenn returned to Cape Canaveral, his wife was waiting. In the next few weeks, the hero was decorated, photographed, cheered, and idolized. 